mother's life was like in the summer. She'd start dinner at about 5.30 and keep it going until about 10, because she had to, because one of us would be coming in from the fields, finishing at a different time. Dinner, so dinner was supper, and it was a lighter meal. Uh, dinner was served at lunchtime, and she would finish breakfast, and then she would start on dinner. But breakfast started like at 6 a.m. <coughs> well, she was getting it ready. Well, we'd have we a short to do before breakfast, though. Yeah, the boys were out doing the work. Dad was milking cows. Would irrigate and feed the animals mm -hmm. before, yeah. before school. You, I, I have this memory of you telling me once that your dad was not allowed to work in the kitchen. Well, not... He would be he chased not, out of that... No, 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 she wouldn't chase him out. She let him know that she didn't want him to be in there because she knew he had other things he needed to be doing. He, he he had outside too. Let me tell you what it was like. Dorothy is reared in the same kind of family I was, and shortly after we were married, I got up to get the salt and the pepper, and she said, I'll get it. And I said, well, I have legs, and she said, no, you don't understand. This is my way of communicating to you that I love and care for you. So in our marriage, I would come and sit, she'd serve me, and all my daughters think I'm chauvinistic. <laughs> and and uh, and it was. I will just tell you that it was a dead race from the time you could get on the ground in the spring to the end of the harvest, and and you were just pouring it on. And so Dad would say, "That's why we laughed about if you got the twenty-three acres plowed, because he'd want to know how much have you done, how much have you done." Because then that meant he would send the next tractor and the next set of equipment to get the ground ready to plant. And it was just like that. And then you'd cultivate, you'd cultivate the potatoes and you had to cultivate them between every irrigation, which was every six and a half or seven days. Because that's when the water came. So you're going through all of the potatoes. See, or you'll get weeds and then they'll sap up the water. And then on top of that, you're irrigating the grain, and you're cultivating the sugar beets. The sugar beets were a pain in the rear. Okay, and, and then side, mowing side hay. Was mowing more. hay. Yes. You know, you had to mow hay and... and uh, Harvest it. And then rake it. And then I went down to a store the other day, a Kabuta store, and they had three dump rakes. I said, why are you saving that? And he said, I have 40 acres of my wife thinks is just trash. He said, but I happen to think they're beautiful. And so I said to Dorothy, you see those dump rakes? She said, yeah. And I said, those are why all the men had huge calves. Because <laughs> <laughs> you have a team of horses and there's only use one leg. <laughs> so in your own marriages, how did you end up with, you know, dividing up? I think, I mean, you would have told me that you went to work, and, and especially in the earlier days of your marriage, you were the primary breadwinner. Yeah. And you also did the, quote, women's work at home. Yeah. Um, which, was that kind of contrary to your expectations, or... No, because... Were all women at that point expected to... Well, women... Well, even today, I suppose. Not very many women were. Right. So I had to do the women's work and part of the men's that I could do. So your dad could go to school and earn what money he could. So our mornings were like this. She would take care of the milking machines and had these big metal tanks that she'd wash them. My job was to clean out the barn. This is manure we're talking about. <laughs> and to clean out the holding pens that the cows were in. And I used to look at her and think, because her hands would smell like the yes. soap. Remember that soap? Yes. She it smelled was like it all day long. You yes. know what it might smell like? <laughs> I tried like crazy just to get it off. I tried tomato juice. I tried our tomato juice was good. I tried vinegar. So you, did you just not think about gloves or Oh no, we had gloves, but you couldn't keep it off you. And, uh, Just, it was everywhere. It was everywhere. No, matter, no matter what you did, nobody would sit by you in school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
you have rubber boots and you're just slopping around in it. So and you know, I realized that in, in the winter time the cows corral would get the manure would get this high in it and they'd be slumping. They had a little path that they'd go through. We got it, but just try to keep it dry with straw, and that's all it'd be. Yeah. Like, like it, it, never, it never dried up. Yeah. So they were tracking that wherever they went. So you you were the only one that ended up farming. Why? Why did you continue? Farming? Well, I think there are, I think there are several reasons for it. Or did you you didn't have cattle? Yes, we did. We did. Oh no, we you. Yes, we did. Oh. He him you. You mean after when I when right. I did it myself? Right. We didn't have the cattle then. No. Right. So you learned something from that. But <laughs> uh, but I I had another job. I, I did that farming when I. When I was an insurance adjuster still, and, and then I started driving the bus. When I, when you I work in the too. morning, and then you work after. You it came just home to me, it sounds like I, I just can't imagine doing that all the time. And that that's a lot of work. It's a lot of, you know, it's honorable, but it it. Well, I, when I, I went out, can't I see. I got to sleep in until six. <laughs> yeah, and I just I just saying I I can't. I can't see that I would choose to work that way, no, especially we knowing. Today. But I'll tell you, I'll tell you this much: when, for me, I really enjoyed watching plants grow. And in the summertime, when we'd raise the grain, the grain would get get up about that high, and then when it gets dry, it started to turn really dark green. And then we, while we were irrigating it, we'd we start the water where the water was, and we flooded it all, and we flooded it, and and while when I had the water on, and when the sun would come up in the morning and shine on that grain, I could tell where the water had gone to, without walking down to the end, because the light the grain was lighter. But usually we walked down anyway to make sure, but uh, it was uh, it was a lot of work. It's a satisfying feeling to know. And you know, just saw it happen, and, and we didn't know anything else. I'll bet you, if we could have earned a living, all of us would have farmed. See, Jim loved, Jim loved the farm, just like we did. We were all in it. Jim told me one day in confidence, he said, the one thing I feel bad about in my mission was he said, I worked my companions to death. <laughs> and I laughed because... If we were to be at our first door by 9 o'clock, we were there by 9 o'clock on my mission. Because we knew how to do it. Yeah. And and mission presidents were surveyed about the kind of missionaries they like. And they said, we'd like farm boys and we'd like them from Idaho. Yes. It's a true story. <laughs> it's a true story. Oh, the yeah, <clears throat> mission president in Tempe said that many times. Yeah. He got a, a missionary from Idaho. So we just learned, we just learned to, to work like that. It's just been a huge blessing in my life. I've written over 25 books. Do you know when I wrote? From four to seven every morning. Well, that's another whole issue then, if you... This is why Dorothy and I don't know each other. <laughs> well, I, 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 the question I have then is, um, you know, I've had trouble with my kids, you know, instilling any kind of a work ethic at all. Um, and so how do you, you know, short of farming, how would you encourage your grandkids and your great-grandkids to be able to build that kind of... We didn't have to worry about it because there's plenty for us to do. I know, you for you. Kids, there's not that much to do, and it's awful hard. You gotta find it's awful, really, really, really hard. You, yeah. you see how big like this lot is? That's why it's that big. It was divided up. Because so you're raising kids back there. Yep. And when we got that taken care of, I was out there. We had the world's largest garden once, and I was out there working on my own, and I thought, something is wrong about this picture. So I took out the raspberries and the strawberries and the grapes and built a, put a fence around them, planted grass, and bought two calves. <laughs> it's a true story. <laughs> and then it wasn't enough for them to do. And one of the reasons we bought that property up there was so that we could work together. 
What that property represents is one project every summer between me and one of my kids, including all the girls, by the way. That, and then it's extended to the grandkids. There are mowers now. They mow up there. You know how many mowers I own? <laughs> <laughs> I have four mowing machines. Two for up there that are really old, and two down here. And I have teams of grandsons that come. <laughs> Luckily, we have boys. Yeah. Lots of boys. Yeah. And if the granddaughters want to come, they can. So they come, and I get acquainted with them. We laugh and talk and see, and we, we're like buds now, because every so often I'll stop them and tell them some of my father's stories and yeah. stuff. But I agree with you. It's really hard to, to, to have something. We don't have when, enough for them. When I raised my kids, I didn't have enough for them to do. Going out and... Hauling the garbage once a week isn't the same as, as going every morning to some feed the calves or whatever you had to do. But it's not the same. They have good work ethics. In yeah. What did you do, Dale? Well, they do. Okay. How come you work? I don't think I work like you guys worked. Hopefully <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you don't need to. Yeah. That, I went to college. <laughs> but, but while you were in high school stuff, did you have chores or anything? Um... My main chore was to water the avocado trees, okay. but I was paid for that. That's okay. Um, and I, I don't remember that being overly strenuous. It was more about moving sprinklers around. Um, That's what they had available. That you had to pay attention to. And... Well, I, I think that you know, I, I thought I was like earning my twenty dollars a month or whatever. But you know, if we talk to Dad now, he was, he was, you know. He was very proud of the fact that he could hand that job off to me and, and I would just do it. Yes. That's so Jim decides to build a new house and he decides to build it in the middle of 10 acres <laughs> with, with trees, fruit trees for all of his kids to take care of. That wasn't. They were all gone by the time. They were all gone. Yeah. They do take them sometimes for themselves. <laughs> so I don't know. All of our memories are like that. He came home from his mission once, and we had this uh, an old thing. beat cart. And it had a chain at the bottom, and Dad would fill it up while he was waiting for one of the trucks. And then you could get the tractor, and we'd load it off, load it into a truck. And one day the chain broke when it was full yeah. of beets, which meant that... He unloaded it all and picked it hand, that's right. And loaded it back up again. Do you know what he said? He said, goodness gracious. <laughs> 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 but it was, the same, it was the same chain that was on the spud diggers. Yeah. Same yeah. Thing. Rita, did you pick potatoes? Oh, yes. I loved it. I I mean, I didn't love the picking, I loved the money. Yes. <laughs> that was where I got my Christmas money and my school yeah, clothes money. We were never getting paid for what we did. No, we didn't. <laughs> we were driving the tractors. Oh, yeah, we bought the tractors, and these guys were earning the money, and we wouldn't get it. <laughs> yeah. uh, what about the potatoes? Yeah, we were hauling those potatoes, and I'd go to tithing settlement, and Dad and the bishop say, How much you're tithing? And Dad would put a quarter out there, and they, I said, It's tithing. <laughs> You, sh you should bring. You should have brought potatoes for tithing. I got two dollars and fifty cents. But that's how much. Or either that or a dime or something like that. That was my tithing. That's about how much money he had. <laughs> well, David, that's I mean, really a true story. You got the shaft. You were the oldest, and you got all the jobs. And uh, I thought I was really good because I got to drive the tractors while you guys got to work. Yeah, you didn't have to crawl around on your knees on clods. Oh, that's right. <laughs> but I made the clods softer by the... <laughs> <laughs> what a good brother you are. <laughs> Boy, that was something, wasn't it, those days? And I guess that's another reason why, why I liked what I was doing. Dad always treated me like I was a partner. He'd ask me before he bought any, of, any equipment, even when I was young. And we'd, we'd talk about it, and I, and I don't know if you ever asked Mom or not. Mom didn't seem to care. Oh, I don't think so. She wouldn't have cared. But, uh, but we would, and, and he, 
we got a lot of, spent a lot of money on equipment while Mum stayed in that old house and worked real hard before she got any remodeling done. I always felt sorry about that, but I'm sure happy to get the new machinery so we wouldn't have to work so hard. So there, I, I heard a legend that he was, he had new machinery before anybody else and he was a kind of a, a gearhead. I don't know about the new machinery. I do know this, that, that when, when we trains from far, from horses pulling the equipment to tractors pulling the equipment, Dad was the first one to cultivate sugar beets with a tractor. Now, you don't understand about cultivating sugar beets. They, they were raised in a row. They're 22 inches apart. And the first time you ever planted them, you had, they, they had to go through an inch and a half. And you had to set your cultivator so that 22 inches from that center, 22 inches to that center, beets would go through, everything else in between and get cut up. Six rows at a time. And there were six, six rows of them. With really a half inch of play. And, and That's about it. You didn't yeah. want to dig up the beat. And so, so we'd, we'd be on that and he'd set it like that. And I remember right now. The first is, time is this more did. automated today? It, it seems like it would have it to is. be. There's a lot of changes. But, but he, he, so he'd be there. A you know, whole bunch of people, all the farmers lined up on the ditch bank. And I was standing with them. And, and he... I heard an old Orland Wolf, and I remember it still. It's like that today. He says, the damn fool, cut them all out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think that if I understood that principle about the measurements, I might have done a better job of doing the cultivating. But see, that was only the first time, and I'm not sure you ever cultivated the beets the first time. Oh, probably not. They were over. Yeah, they were yeah, They would be bigger. We did, we did side dressing. Yes. Dad, Dad was pretty fussy about that. No, I, that's the night I, one of the days when I went on mid midnight's movie and woke up and got to, got back from that movie at 4 o'clock in the morning. Dad was getting up and he said, you promised you'd go to work. So I went and fed my cattle and got on a tractor to to do those beats. And, and I went you can do that in the dark? No. Was well, he made a discovery that if you cut out one of those six rows, all <laughs> you cut six of them. And I cut out six oh, rows. Oh, he's got the rod. <laughs> this is a dumb question. Do you plant beets by seed? Yes. Yeah. Okay. The best way Let me just explain beet another beet thing beet. about beets. Oh, okay. When, when we were young, beet sugar beets oh, okay. would, would, were in yeah, seeds, but the seeds would, would grow up and they'd raise yeah. two or three, two or three yeah. beets with them from one seed. And you had to separate them. And so, so when they, we, wrote them, we did them like that because you come along, you wanted about eight inches between the beets, and then the ones that were left between there in that eight inches plant. that had doubles, you had to pull them out. So the holes were how wide were they? You had to do it by hand in those days. Eight inches. Yeah. Eight, so or, one, eight, yeah, yeah. eight or ten inches. That, that, so that the yeah. beets get bigger, get bigger. Was that before thinning beets? That's what was thinning. What was the hole? That was thinning. That's what Why I did we hold? They used to do it well, with because you get the rest of the weeds out. The weeds out. Well, weeds. You could cultivate in between, but you could never get right and that good and and you cultivated them and stopped them in between, and then you'd go through and make make the corrections that you missed but, yeah. while you're thinning them. I'm gonna put stuff. you on. Do you have time if I put you on? Okay, just a minute. And, uh, and then the the, the education good. changed, and and they made can, beets. Can, can the, Kyle they bred them, or so Greg tell you a story? One seed. Are you yeah. there? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Everyone's listening. We well, interrupted oh. David, but everybody's listening. Well, I feel like I need to say something really funny now, but I don't have anything funny <laughs> to say. So. <laughs> Sweet. Uh, Let's take a story. So we are in uh, we're in St. George right now. I, I'm in I'm at the Gap looking for church pants for my son, so I apologize for the Gap background music here. <laughs> but we we were in the baptistry. Uh, about an hour ago, and um, my son Cooper was baptizing our daughter, and I'm watching the witness up there, and I'm thinking, that guy looks just like Bud Griffin, you know, uh, about 30 years older, and from the last time I saw him, and I just kept looking at his profile, thinking, he looks just like I remember Bud looking, and, and, when, and when Cooper went, our son went in the water to baptize, we went over by where the witnesses were, up, up by where the witnesses, up on the stand where the witnesses are observing the baptism. I look over, and his name tag is Brother Griffin. And so 
I walked over and I said, you've got to be Bud's brother. And he said, yeah, Bud was my, Bud was my brother. And, uh, and I told him who I was and he knew we were from Arizona and uh, we, we didn't get a chance to talk much, but I thought that was a real tender experience given, given uh, Anne's passing this week. Yeah. So that was uh, great for me to experience and I wanted to share that with, with you. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to take you off speaker just a minute and walk around. But yeah, thank you. That was